So as you can see, there's not a whole lot in front of me. The ingredients are fairly minimal. The key to this one is patience. My mom's always told me I'm one of the most impatient people she's ever known. So, so this will be a test of, of my patience. Uh, the bones that I actually got um, are, are basically legs that have been, been chopped up, but you can see they're, they're loaded with marrow. So we're actually gonna fire these in the oven, probably 40, 45 minutes, something, something on those lines. We just wanna get these nice and golden brown, um, and, and then we'll utilize that. So let's fire these in the oven. And then next we're gonna put our mirepoix in. So no different than we were making our chicken stock a couple episodes ago, mirepoix, carrot, celery, and onion. The difference with this, and you can see it, is the actual size of the vegetables. So because we're making a beef stock, we want our vegetables to be bigger. So the longer you actually are reducing or Kind of simmering your stock the bigger you want the chunks you don't want everything to fall apart early on in in that process so these ones are significantly bigger i've already started preheating my pan over here okay so nice and hot pan but now what we're going to do is we're going to caramelize our veg so there's a couple different ways that you can go about this you can actually put that in the roasting pan with your with the, the beef bones, and that's, and that's totally kosher. There's a lot of places that actually do that. That's the way I was taught how to do it. Uh, I found that the veg doesn't typically caramelize consistently all the way through. So over time, being at the end, making some adjustments, doing my own thing, I uh, actually pan roast them. So as you can hear it, starting to talk a little louder because it's noisy in here. So we're gonna get that really back one. So we're just going to let that rest, we're going to let it do its thing, we'll keep moving it, then we're going to add some more ingredients. So I don't know if you can actually tell, the door is open behind me, there's two windows now open in the kitchen. Uh, I, I don't have a vent, super old house, we haven't gotten to the reno no different than not having cut doors on our cupboards okay so smoke detector goes off i'm in the middle of filming and cooking so what i do take it off tear the batteries out that's that's what we're that's what we're doing so anyway our, our veg looks great nicely caramelized you can see that it's even okay next step is going to be adding just a small tin of tomato paste we want to cook out that tomato paste. And one of, one of the key ingredients for, for making our beef stock. So we're going to char it up, mix it all in with the veg. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, so again, when we talked before about getting all this color, it's extracting the sugars and caramelizing the sugars. Not only is it gonna add color, it's gonna add a little bit of sweetness to our actual stock itself. So don't, don't worry about it getting bitter. We're actually sweetening up. If you, if you burn it, for sure, then we've got some problems. We'll just cook that out for a second. Got a bottle of Hester Creek, local wine, BC wine. Uh, I didn't want to spend too, too much money, and also I, I would have got something a little bit closer to home, but they're pretty expensive. I ended up getting a Cab Merlot. Cabs just by themselves are difficult to find nowadays, but really it's not a big deal. But you do want something that is full bodied, has some good jam to it, and is going to add a fair amount of flavor. So now what we're going to do, we're going to pop the bottle, and we're now what's going to call deglaze our pan. So we're going to get all the little bits that are stuck to the bottom of the pan. Might as well taste it first, yeah. On. They say to taste wine twice, right? Mm, mm -hmm. This will work just fine. So let's get our wine in here. I'm gonna turn our heat off. And let's just get all the bits, give it a bit of a scrape. You can see in the bottom of the pan where it's, it's been sticking. It's actually coming loose. And we're getting all those beautiful little parts, those little bits, the little flavor bombs we'll call them. 
And you can see the bottom of the pan is actually starting to go back to its original stainless steel color to it. And it almost turns into a, a bit of a stew, okay? Bring that all together, keep, keep scraping. Okay, so now that's that's our mirepoix. We're, we're ready to go. It really doesn't take very long. Give it a bit of time. Turn your hood vent on if you've actually got one so the smoke detector doesn't come turn on and the dogs start freaking out, okay? So that's that's it. I'm just going to keep it off to the side. I, I do have some some dried herbs ready to go, but we'll get that into we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, right, so it's been about 40 45 minutes. Bones are done. They look awesome. Can't wait to show you. Keep my face away so my glasses don't fog up. Oh my god, oh my god. Looks absolutely fantastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one, I'm going to fire them in the pot. So JJ, there is marrow in here for sure. It looks like I've cooked out a fair amount of it with all the oil sitting on the bottom of the pan. This is going to be dynamite. This will be great. So like I said in the, during the chicken stock when we did uh, a couple of videos ago, we want to be able to, we're going to use cold water. So we're going to come on over to the sink. Hurry up and wait. So the cold water again is going to pull out all those nutrients, the good things that are coming out of it. It's also going to take the impurities that are going to be in here, bring them to the top. We're going to do a little bit of skimming because there's a fair amount of fat that we don't want. Once that comes back up to it, we're going to bring that up to a simmer. Okay. After we've done the skim, that's when we're going to add in our, our beautiful vegetable and tomato and wine uh, mirepoix and awesomeness, okay? So, back onto the stove we go. Crank that up, bring it up, we'll be back. Not very often we're cooking like this at home. The last three weeks we have been. And I've, I've got this lovely little companion with me in the kitchen. Uh, all she can smell is the beef. She loves the smell of it. So every time I, I sit down, she's sniffing my apron. She's hanging out with me in the kitchen, which I love. Can't get away with that. We're not going to tell anybody that we may have gotten busted by the health department in at the Athlone Inn, but we're not going to tell that story. Um, but I just did, so it's good. So our our stock has now come, uh, come up to a boil. So when I was talking about impurities, uh, that's what we're now going to skim off. We've got a little bit of fat on the top. So just a bowl. The kitchen brigade again, John, right? I don't know if everybody's seen this bowl yet. Um, so I'm just gonna run my ladle just on the top surface and you can see some of that fat just, just jumps right in. So that's gonna, st that, that, as this simmers, the fat will eventually boil into our stock, which will make it really cloudy. At got our vegetables that we worked so hard on, looks so nice. Time for them to jump into the pot. Everybody go for a swim. I will use a spatula in a minute, but I don't think you guys need to watch quite for that long. Okay, throw that in. Dried herbs, cup, just two bay leaves is going to be plenty. Got a little bit of rosemary, oregano, and some basil. That goes thrown into the pot as well. This gets turned way down. Just a really, really light simmer, barely breaking, and we just let that go. Typically, a beef stock is going to be six to eight hours. Um, so we're, we're now in it for the long run. So pretty straightforward to put together. Uh, now we, we hurry up and wait and, and let this do the rest of the work. So our, our beef stock, six, seven hours realistically for the volume that I have. If we're doing bigger volume, then we'll definitely get to those eight hours. So I've already strained it. I let the reduction go a little bit further than I normally would. So strained it into here. This is what is now going to be our demi-glaze glass de Vion. Uh, it's not glass de veau because we use beef instead of veal. So this is going to reduce now down basically to, to sauce consistency. So why did I fill this back up? If I've taken all the nutrients, all the colors and all the flavor out of that first one, well, I refilled it and it's called a remi or a remelage. So generally what happens way back when, if you look further back into the, the cookbooks and the study books of, of cuisine, a remelage is a second boil. 
What that second boil traditionally is for is we do the six to eight hours with the Remy, we strain that off and we hold on to that. When we go to make our a, another new stock, instead of using water, we use the Remy. It's just gonna boost it that much more. You're gonna get that much more flavor out of that. So I took that philosophy and said, well, if it's if we're still getting some flavor off the bones, well, why not why not use it with, with our demi? So I'm gonna bring this up to a boil, let it go for a few hours. Then I'm gonna add it into our reduction, our demi. It's gonna increase the volume and the amount that I'm actually gonna get. It doesn't really dissipate the flavor. It actually just gives me more volume. The flavor's still there, and, and then that's where we're gonna end up making our final sauce.